so this is the planetary system we where we where okay and there's there's lots of planets Okay, so we can actually stop this thing from spinning around. Okay, stop spinning. Warning, warning. Selected destination is a black hole. <laughs> okay, that's a good, uh, good warning. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Cap. Any suggestions? I'm sorry, Captain. I Tactical conversations. Ah, com communications. Uh, so, thank you again for your efforts, but I'm afraid we're rather busy. I understand, Chancellor. We will let you return. Okay. Shut Greeting, up. Shaynok. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Captain, how may I assist you? Shaynok, we have several Garidian refugees aboard who are trying to find something called the Fifth Scroll. They said you might be able to help. Possibly. I once did extensive research on the Lawgiver and the Followers. They fled into what is now Federation space a thousand years ago, bearing the Fifth Scroll with them. We've heard of them. So where did these Followers go? I never found the Followers' colony, but your friends should not lose hope. In my search, I stumbled on one of the Followers' ancient ships. Okay. The logs indicated that they had found an M-class planet suitable for colonization. What brings an archaeologist of your stature to such a remote planet? I am excavating the ruins of a Chodak outpost. The Federation Archaeological Survey is sponsoring my work. Okay, interesting. Who are the Chodak? An ancient race. At their peak, the Chodak occupied most of what is now the Romulan Empire. But I thought all known Chodak ruins were on the other side of the neutral zone. This is the first Chodak site found in Federation space. It was my good fortune to discover it. What have you found so far? A great deal, actually. I have uncovered evidence of an extensive administrative system, as well as examples of Chodak computer technology quite similar to our own isolinear rods. Intriguing. Such devices would be among the oldest known examples of isolinear technology in the galaxy. You're basically Star Trek supercomputers. I hope to confirm that fact. I sent several rods to the Merton's orbital station for testing. They've developed a gravitic stress dating method, which is extremely accurate. However, I have not yet received their results. Well, about that, you might need to wait longer time. I'm afraid we have got some bad news for you, Shaynok. Merton's station has been attacked. It was almost completely destroyed. Indeed. That is a great loss. I'd be most eager to examine the site myself. I can beam down immediately. 
I'm sus. Captain, I'm aware of your reputation as an archaeologist, but I cannot permit any visitors. The excavation is far too delicate. My apologies. Maybe he's a real archaeologist. Thank you for your help, Shaynok. Good luck. And to you, Captain. Live long and prosper. Okay, resume patrol. This is wrong answer. I should like to consider the situation a bit further. Chancellor, the Vulcan archaeologist Shaynok sent some artifacts to Merton Station to be tested. Can you give us any information about this? I'm sorry. Shaynok's artifacts were in the destroyed section of the station, as were many other relics we were analyzing. Mm, sus. Thank you again for your efforts, but I'm afraid we're rather busy. There's much work to do to recover from this disaster. You I'm sorry, Captain. Any suggest? I'm sorry, Captain. I don't have it. Mr. Data, any I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. Admiral Williams here. What can I do for you, Captain? What's your assessment of our recent performance? The Enterprise responded to a distress call from Merton Station. Good work there, Picard. Without your efforts, this could have been a real catastrophe. So basically, she says different things if you muck things up. You saved hundreds of lives, kept the station operational, and even managed to save the experimental power core. Congratulations. Okay, so that could have gone a lot Shall worse. Shall I go on? Please do. The Enterprise's presence in this region has set a lot of minds at ease, but I'm still concerned about the Romulan activity in the area. Look sharp, Captain. I'd like to confirm our current orders. Of course. Starfleet Command is still considering the options. While we review the situation, the Enterprise is to remain on patrol. Okay. Picard out. So. Captain, message from Starfleet. It is Admiral Redrick. Okay, that, that, that was fast. Ignore that. On, On screen. screen. Greetings, Admiral. What can we do for you? Jean-Luc, good to see you again. I have a little favor to ask. Would you be interested in finding a little lost lamb for me? Okay. A lamb? <laughs> a figure of speech. I have a friend stationed on Morassia, an exobiologist. I haven't heard from her in quite a while. I'm getting a little worried. I'd like you to check into it if you can. Who exactly is this lost lamb? Her name is Dr. V. Hunforsch. She was on Barassia cataloging local species for the Federation Zoological Database. But no one's seen her for days. Have the local authorities investigated the matter? Constable Lixie, who runs the preserve, thinks V went on a field trip and that there's nothing to worry about. To humor me, she said I should send a team to investigate. Admiral, do you have any reason to suspect foul play? Uh, the truth? V is headstrong, but she might be chasing butterflies. But I think there's more to it than that. And Jean-Luc, Marassia is applying for Federation membership. You could review the state of affairs there while you're looking for our exobiologist. Very well. As soon as we receive your report, we'll get on the way. I'll transmit it immediately. Oh, and Jean-Luc, the Morassians have a strict matriarchal <laughs> society. Males are usually treated as servants at best. Don't take it personally. <laughs> Understood, sir. One of those planets again. Good luck. Redrick out. Okay. 
Laying a course for Marassia, warp five. Yes, sir. Entering non-aligned space. Okay. Helm, standard orbit. What is actually standard orbit? Can some, someone Captain explain? Captain supplemental. The Enterprise has arrived at Marassia to investigate the disappearance of Dr. V. Hunforsch, an exobiologist stationed here for the past two years. The three species native to this world have enjoyed a millennium of peaceful cooperation, and this visit will give us the opportunity to review Marassia's petition for membership in the Federation. It's time we introduced ourselves. Mr. Worf, Hail Constable Lixie. I really would like to upscale these, these videos with the AI. Hi, Captain. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard with the Federation Starship Enterprise. We have come to investigate the disappearance of Dr. Hunforsch. Okay, that's a planet of jetties. Welcome to Morassia. As I told Admiral Redrick, I really don't think Dr. Hunforsch is in any danger. She's probably on an extended field trip. Good. We'll need your beam-down coordinates. I shall transmit them. And Captain, in order to protect the animals in the preserve, we permit no weapons of any kind on the surface. Our away teams carry phasers for self-defense only. They can be locked on a low stun setting. I assure you none of your animals will be harmed. I'm sorry, Captain. I won't allow it. We cannot predict how even your lowest setting will affect our animals. We will respect your laws. We will respect your laws. The away team will not be armed. For a male, you are unusually cooperative. Is there any better way to begin a relationship? Forgive me, Captain. I am not accustomed to seeing a male in command. I will await your investigators. One of those planets. Constable Lixie is present. That's a talking chocobo. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Welcome. So you are the artificial human. Interesting. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there really is no need for alarm. Dr. Hoon Forsh is probably just on an extended field trip. Um, pretty sus. <laughs> okay, let's let's know that. Who were the last people to see the doctor? Several columns uh, program on. Apparently, consultant Idia was the last to see her. They had dinner or some such. It's all in my report. You should be able to access it through your tricorder. If the doctor had been injured somewhere in the preserve, would you be able to locate her? Of course. But our surveillance system can detect signs of distress in any of our inhabitants. And we've had no sign of trouble from the doctor. Your tone suggests that you do not like Dr. Hunforsh. She hasn't made many friends here. She disagrees openly with our philosophy, our methods, and has even accused us of smuggling banned species. Hmm. I would like to investigate the preserved grounds where the doctor last worked. We'd prefer to limit the number of outsiders in the preserve while it is under construction. Investigating the doctor's laboratory should be sufficient. A thorough investigation of the doctor's disappearance will require me to enter the preserve. Furthermore, the Federation Council has requested a review of Morassia. Unhindered access will allow me to prepare a far more detailed report. <laughs> That's actually The Federation's logical. requests are not law here. Not yet. But in the interests of cooperation, I'll open up the area surrounding my outpost. 
be sure to stay within the visitor's areas. You must understand, my responsibility to the animals comes first. The preserve clearly embodies your philosophy of life forms living within life forms to create a single harmonious organism. It is an impressive achievement. Very observant, Commander. Your perceptiveness does you credit. I have no more questions for you at this time. May I investigate the doctor's uh, quarters? He uh, automatically a asks the last question. Of course. Her laboratory quarters are at the end of the path towards the mountains. Okay, la lab is over there. And it takes like an hour to get there. This paramammalian species has been cryogenically preserved for medical analysis. Okay. The bioprobe analyzes samples that a field unit collects from specimens. It is used primarily for zoological analysis. The field unit is configured for a specific terrain and climate. It monitors the conditions of animals who have been injected with identification microchip. Okay. Dr. B. So this is her... team but people that are interested that is unnecessary it is possible that this animal is an akana boar from the planet Jer the medical tricorder has 86 omni. I do not believe that. I do not believe. That. The computer is a Birkin 400K model from Arguello 9. The system is accessed by voice print or password. Massive computer fragmentation. Ha. Huh. Get the car, guys. <laughs> okay, yeah. Channel to tracker Melas. Channels open. Tracker. Greetings. I doubt that she is in any danger. She's probably just taking a vacation after her blow up with Constable Lixie. Aha! We found your name in the doctor's laboratory. What is your relationship with her? Hmm. I teach her territorial recognition. At least I did. We suspended our lessons after the power outages began. I haven't seen her since, but I doubt she's lost. Such an excellent tracker, even if she is a bit weak in the nose. You mentioned power outages. Can you describe them in greater detail? A power surge at our quarantine shelter destroyed some of the generators. Two watchers were seriously injured and several animals escaped. Since then, we've had outages in the biotopes. They're still under investigation. Interesting. Without the generator, the individual containment fields in the shelter will not function. You would no longer be able to quarantine any animals for analysis or adaptation. That's right. 
Most of our personnel are out searching for escaped animals right now. Dr. Hunforsch might be doing that on her own. I have some questions regarding several animal carcasses which we found in the doctor's laboratory. Yeah, yeah they're... Um, uh, re uh, no. Well, death. Uh, reasons, to, reasons to death are suspicious. Of course. Dr. Hundforsch was examining these carcasses for a reason. I suggest we perform biological and sonic scans on the car- I wish you well on your- <laughs> Okay, that was exit. Exit option. Open- Channels open. I have some questions. Of course. Died on starvation. The creature tagged as a Frednorian boar apparently died of starvation. Do you know how this could have occurred? Hard to say. The watchers are quite good. I can't imagine they just let this happen. Maybe they were given the wrong care instructions. Or maybe the animal was not identified correctly. A creature tagged as a Kujan gibbon died of a parasitic infection not found in its native habitat. How could this have occurred? Hmm. I don't know. The watchers are the ones who care for the animals. Maybe they can help you. One creature experienced an energy drain within its neural pathways. It is untagged, but appeared to be a mole of some sort. It's probably a myocorde mole. They're quite common on Morassia. But I've never heard of one dying like this before. Its cause of death is unusual, but not unprecedented. I have personally encountered a species that consumed human neural energy for survival. Yep. In is the there fifth a preserve season. animal that might feed on myocorde neural energy? None that I know of. But perhaps the myocorde got caught in one of the generator power surges. But then it wouldn't be drained of energy. I don't know. Thank you for your time. I wish you well on your search. It's possible the constable felt that telling us about her argument with the doctor would arouse our suspicions. But why would she withhold information about the escapes? Channels. This blow-up you mentioned, do you mean the constable and the doctor had an argument? Dr. Hoonforsch discovered that several animals from Aramut Eagle species mistagged. Serious offense. That's why she thought Constable Lixie might be involved to thwart Federation entry. Ah. What exactly are the Watchers' responsibilities? The Watchers feed and care for the preserved species. Has Dr. Hunforsch contacted you? No, I still have no sense of her. But I feel she will return soon enough. Thank you for your... I wish you well on your... It's interesting. I would like to know why Dr. Hoon Forsh accused you of smuggling. She found a Romulan creature, which is, of course, banned from import by Federation law. It was tagged as a similar legal species. She has accused me of smuggling it in in order to damage our chances for Federation membership. I appreciate your candor. You impress me, Commander. It's strange that your creator can find you in the male form. Still, you compensate well. I believe the Constable. She seems genuinely devoted to the Preserve, and I don't think she would resort to smuggling, even to thwart Federation membership. Ah! 
How do you explain the mistagged animal? I blame our supplier, Eremut. He's rude, devious, and barely competent. If I'd known Eremut was a Ferengi, ah, I'd fitting. never have listened to Idi as a recommendation. But the contract is binding, and he does deliver on time. But maybe we're only animals. Why do you oppose Federation membership? Membership in the Federation would compromise Marasia's freedom of action. Some of us would rather not see that happen. Constable, I understand the Preserve has been experiencing some unusual power outages. Those were just a few temperamental generators failing. They've been repaired. Is the Federation now concerned with our internal technical difficulties as well? Has there been any contact with Dr. Hun Forsh? No, I'm afraid not. The mole was, was actually what we don't... couldn't discuss about. The uh, causes of death with, with these animals. Sonic scope. Have we tried to use that? Serio diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Subject is in a conobore. I see no way. Use this. I see no way. Okay, can't can't use it. I have some questions regarding several animal carcasses which we found in the doctor's laboratory. Of course. The boar's identity tag is incorrect. It is actually an Akana boar, a close genetic relative of the Frednorian. However, Akana are banned for import. How did this animal get into the preserve? That's a good question. That's one of the new arrivals from the second shipment. Maybe there was an error. You know, we had a number of minor problems with creatures from that shipment. Thank you for your time. I wish you well on your search. Both Melas and the constable mentioned Dr. Idia. Let's contact... Okay, so I need to re listen to the crew. Before that, can I, can I cancel? No, I can't. Okay. Open the channel to Consultant Idia. Channels open. As I told Constable Lixie, I don't know where she is. Must you interrupt my research with more pointless questions? I am afraid so. According to the Constable's report, you are the Preserve's consultant. Yes, I help select and verify preserved species in the biotopes. The Morassians wanted a Federation expert, despite Lixie's objections. They were lucky to get me. You were the last to see Dr. Hune Forge before her disappearance? As far as I know, that's not a crime. Constable Lixie mentioned that you recommended the Ferengi trader Aramut for the second shipment. He delivers what you want on time. The constable gave me hell when she found out that he was a Ferengi. She barely tolerates me because I'm a male. I have some questions regarding several animal carcasses which we found in the doctor's laboratory. Animal carcasses in an exobiology lab? Well, that's certainly unusual. I think this is more important. A creature tagged as a Kujan gibbon died of a parasitic infection not found in its native habitat. How could this have occurred? I'd say it died of neglect. Those watchers don't know the first thing about dealing with animals. They're not scientists. They're glorified zookeepers. Why don't you go ask them about it? A mycorde mole experienced an electrical drain from its neural pathways. How could this have occurred? Energy monsters. I'd say it died of neglect. Those watchers don't know the first thing about dealing with animals. They're not scientists. They're glorified zookeepers. 
Why don't you go ask them about it? A creature tagged as a Fretnorian boar apparently died of starvation. Do you know how this could have occurred? Sounds like incompetence to me. The watches blindly follow whatever care instructions they're given. No personal initiative at all. The boar's identity tag is incorrect. It is actually an Akana boar, a close genetic relative of the Fredonorian. However, Akana are banned for import. How did this animal get into the preserve? It must have been smuggled in. You know, the watches have requested restricted species before and were denied. Dr. Hoonforge must have found out about it. Uh-huh. Consultant, I am puzzled. Since you verify preserved species, you must have known this was an Akana. Why did you not report the misidentification? Hmm. I didn't want to. I wanted the chance to study it. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Who am I to deprive science of my brilliant research on such a specimen? Did the doctor confront any of the watchers with her suspicions? I think that's why she's missing. When she confronted them with the Akana, they must have stunned her. Those stunners don't trigger the surveillance system, so nobody knows about it. Why would the Watchers resort to smuggling? They're fanatics out to save the endangered creatures of the universe. I've suspected them all along, especially when I discovered this mistagging. You see, these tags can only be reprogrammed by a Watcher. Uh-huh. I'd like to know what you and the Doctor discussed. When I saw her for supper the other day, she was talking about genetic samples from the last shipment. She knows I don't like to hear people talk while I eat, so she said little else. But Dr. Hoonforsch was cataloging Morassian species exclusively. Why would she want genetic samples from other animals in the preserve? I don't concern myself with the lab work of junior scientists. Now do you mind? I have important research to conduct. Thank you for your time. Thank you for wasting it. Idiot's accusation that the Watchers are fanatics is certainly plausible. Collectors can be quite zealous in their pursuit of rare specimens. Um, yeah. I, I think that was... Was it like a from second season where Data was captured as a specimen? Idiot certainly has a high opinion of himself. The thing he seemed most interested in was his reputation. No unusual reading. This microgenerator has a thermally rechargeable power source. This is a t using drones to gather samples. I see no... Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subjects' neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Okay, that's quite mighty interesting. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject contains high ionic residue and trace amounts of neurotranquilizers. Originating creature may consume energy. So what happens if you put the uh, worst predators of the galaxy in the same zoo? Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag.
This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are within the jelly corals and the water. Jelly corals. Look the samples. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Feels like somebody is actually running a uh, two on test test animals. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. All readings are normal. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the caverns, the pit, and the crater. Caverns, pit, and the crater. Pit, uh, crater, caverns, caverns, caverns. Okay, starting from the left. I'd like to contact Hela Zolis. I'd like to con. Okay. Open the ch channels. I am Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Hmm, a Starfleet officer. I was expecting this. Tracker Mela indicated that you knew of a confrontation between Dr. Hoon Forsh and the constable. Hmm. Yes, the doctor mentioned it when she asked about Aramut. He's a Ferengi who provides us with alien species for the preserve. Was she inquiring about mistagged animals from his shipment? Yes, she had spoken to Zudan, one of the three watchers in charge of the last shipment. He told her to talk to Aramut. On several occasions, the Watchers requested restricted species and were denied. Is it possible that Aramut was secretly supplying the Watchers with illegal species? Aramut has a rather unsavory reputation. The Watchers wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. Uh, but you can ask Zudan yourself. Did Consultant Idia know of Aramut's reputation when he recommended him for a traitor? Considering how long Idia and Aramid have known each other, I would think so. Those two go back quite a while. I think Idia even came here on Aramid's ship. Ah, uh, sus. Did the other Watchers also tell her to speak to Aramid? I doubt it. The other Watchers were at the quarantine shelter and suffered some kind of neural energy drain when the generators exploded. They've been comatose ever since. Zudan's the only Watcher on duty now. That's highly suspicious. We have found several animals which suffered energy drains. Perhaps we could compare neuroscans to see if the injuries are similar. I'll send you the Watcher's neuroscans. You can view them on the bio table, but I recommend you speak to Watcher Zudan. You can find him at the quarantine shelter. Quarantine shelter. Thank you for your time. Mm, certainly. Good luck to you. Idia was the last to see Dr. Hunforsh before she disappeared. Idia is friends with a Ferengi, and Ferengi traders are not known for their honor. Perhaps Idia is guilty. <laughs> <laughs> he might be actually right. The watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, like the Myocorde mole. Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. 
I'm responsible for preserve animals, not Federation scientists. I understand the doctor spoke to you of her concerns regarding smuggling in the preserve. Yes, she came here soon after the outages, ranting away. Imagine, accusing me, when I'm the one who told her about that boar mistagging. What creature was in this area? A two meter long, 180 kilogram Sultis reptile, which came in on the last shipment. I found the watchers next to its cage the night of the outages. It's still missing. My readings show traces of a tranquilizing agent in its waist. Eremit always doses his animals with neurotranquilizers, just like Idia. We had to feed the reptile intravenously for days. <coughs> It finally woke up right before the accident, just in time to escape. Okay, that explains the neurotranquilizers. But a huge amount of neurotranquilizers, like a 75% of animals. These readings share the same ionic residue as samples found near other creatures drained of electrical energy. And this cage is also next to the drain generator. Perhaps the Sultis reptile is a mistagged animal that consumes electrical energy. <laughs> the bad, bad idea to place a animal that consumes electrical energy to the next to the generator. But there were no reports of it being seen near any of the power outages, and that reptile isn't easy to miss. Unless it's found a way to turn itself invisible, you're going to need another theory. Well, it's possible. We have encountered several species capable of phasing out of the time continuum and, in effect, becoming invisible. <laughs> yeah. We have also encountered species who consumed human neural energy. The Saltus reptile may be a life form with similar characteristics. One, one season ago. <laughs> well, if you believe so, I suppose it's possible. I have examined the neuroscans of the injured watchers. The electrical energy within their neural pathways has decreased significantly. How could that have happened? I don't know. During my evening rounds, I found them unconscious next to the Saltus reptile cage. I carried them outside the shelter and was going for help when the generators exploded. Hmm. Were you the one who found the carcass? Yes. It died just before the outages, and I wanted her to test it. Ah. Why did you not ask consultant idiot to test the carcass? I don't trust him. Always drugging and borrowing animals for his experiments. In the interests of science, he says. I don't know how he could have approved that mistagging in the first place. Do the Watcher's stunners set off the preserve surveillance system? The system only detects signs of distress. Normal sleep does not raise an alarm. Likewise, stunners and neurotranquilizers also don't alert the system. Unlike Idia and Aramit, we prefer stunners. Chemical Thanks sedation following. can be harmful. Consultant Idia mentioned that only watchers can change the ID tags. That's true, but the suppliers tag the animals first. We just match them up with the constable's shipping orders. Idia is responsible for verifying them. Is it true that the watchers' requests for restricted species were rejected? Only four species out of 112. Of course, we were upset at first. But once the preserve is completed, we can always try again. Uh-huh. When did you last see Dr. Hune Forsh? I haven't seen her for some time. I've been busy recovering animals which escaped during the power outages. It's not easy work. The last time I saw her, I sent her to talk to Aramut. Thank you for your time. Watch your step now. Idia persuaded the constable to use Aramut. And it is also capable of verifying mistagged species. And he had the neurotranquilizers to knock out Dr. Hun Forge if she posed a threat to him. Only stunners or drugs could disable someone without setting off the surveillance systems. Idia has a supply of neurotranquilizers. 
Constable, we have reason to believe that Consultant Idia smuggled rare species into the preserve through his friend Aramut. Are you trying to pick up where Dr. Hunforsch left off? She accused nearly everyone else of the same thing. Consultant Idia persuaded you to hire Aramut, and he knowingly verified mistagged animals. He also uses neurotranquilizers, which could have stunned Dr. Hunforsch without triggering your surveillance systems. Idia's been nothing but trouble since he got here. This time he's gone too far. I'll send for him so we can settle this once and for all. Please wait here until Constable Lixie returns. Okay, that's not fast. Constable, we asked Consultant Idia to go to your office. He went to get some items, then suddenly beamed out. He seems to be gone. He must have called Aramid for help. The Ferengi has a subspace transporter. See if you can find Dr. Hoffa. Buffer butt now. There's a woman here asleep with a gag over her mouth. Maybe she knows. Uh huh. That's her, you idiot. Wake her and send her here. And have a look around Idiot's office while you're there. He might have left some evidence. Well. Okay, she's here. Have you captured Idi yet? No. Unfortunately, he escaped with Aramut. This Federation team was sent to find you. Perhaps they can help. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Enterprise. We will apprehend Idia and Aramut. Forget them. We have to recapture the Mistag Siltis. It's already killed dozens of animals and destroyed several containment field generators. The creature must be captured. Constable, can we use the force field at the quarantine? The shelter force field will not help us. The creature escaped once, and it will escape again. Perhaps we can rephase the force field energy frequencies. The creature may not be able to adapt quickly enough to the changes. That might work, but the only place we can rephase the force field power is at the main power grid. I will go to the main power grid and perform the necessary modifications. Good. The power grid is on the other side of the preserve. Take one of the shuttles. I hate to interrupt, but just how are we supposed to lure this creature back to the shelter? We need the bait. Okay, how many cars are capable of blah 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 blah? Since the creature requires energy, we can attempt to channel all available energy into the shelter generators. The creature should be attracted to it. We can't. We're using all our energy reserves to maintain the biotopes. The harmonic collector is capable of emitting high-energy EM fields. We may be able to use it at the shelter. Yes, that should do it. V, I'll send one of the watchers with you to the shelter to help set it up. If we can get the field power rephased, we might get that thing under control. I'll stay and monitor the situation from here. Okay, back to the shelter. That is unnecessary. Okay, it, it worked. And then it fell down. Okay, that was pretty fast change. Uh... This is the utilities distribution network. It controls the allocation of resources in the preserve, including electricity. The utility trunk controls the field energy distribution to the waveguide conduit networks. Intriguing. <laughs> the energy fields are responding. Frequency phasing complete.
hätte etwas. Constable, has the harmonic collector been arranged? Yes, but Dr. Hundforsch needs your help with the quarantine shelter. The only watchers I could find are needed to oversee the other biotopes. We will be there. Just one more thing. Zudan tells me those generators won't hold up for long, and we can't afford to send much power to the shelter right now. Many biotopes are already on reserve power. We will review the situation at the shelter when we arrive. Where will you be? I'll be controlling electrical systems from my office. Then I have to call an emergency meeting of the Morassian Constabulary to explain just what's going on. How are we going to capture this creature? It's all set up, but I need you to operate those consoles while I keep an eye on the creature from here. All right, what do I do first? The harmonic collector is hooked into console two. Once activated, it'll emit high energy pulses to lure the creature in. Okay, what now? Now what do you want me to do? Once the creature gets here, close the gates. The controls are on console one. Console one, okay. Okay. Now what? Now what do you want me to do? Quickly, activate the containment field. Very Star Trek like. We did it. Now what took you so long to find me? <laughs> well. Well, let's just say you weren't immediately missed. Constable Lixie thought you were off on a field trip. She was probably still upset that I accused her of smuggling. I suppose I should apologize to her. Now that I know Idia was behind the whole thing. Idia could have easily killed you. You took a big risk confronting him with your accusations. I didn't confront him. I was just looking for information. But after I asked him about the Sultis, he must have panicked and decided to drug me. I should have suspected when he invited me to dinner. He hates to hear people talk while he eats. So the Watchers had nothing to do with the smuggling at all? Bad, bad day, days, basically. They were the ones who brought the Mistag Boar to my attention in the first place. They weren't smuggling anything. It looks like Idia underestimated this reptile's appetite for electrical energy. That egotist, thinking he could get away with it. Some of these animals are even from Romulan space. Did he think I wouldn't notice? Are you sure they're actually Romulan species? It would take more tests to be certain. But they definitely came from Romulan space. It's not surprising. Aramut does a lot of trading along the neutral zone. What'll happen to this creature? I'm sure Constable Lixie will want to send it back. Unless I can convince her to keep it here. A creature like that doesn't come by every day. The captain's definitely going to want to find Aramut and Idia. I hope you'll try to stay out of any more trouble, Doctor. I think I've had enough excitement for a while. Maybe I should transfer to a starship. It seems like a nice... Dull existence. We're never that lucky. Goodbye, Doctor. Beam us up. Okay. Captain's log supplemental. Our successful attempt to locate Dr. Hunforsch has uncovered another mystery. Apparently, the creature responsible for the chaos on Marassia may have come from Romulan space. We are currently searching for the Ferengi trader Aramut. Despite somewhat questionable trading practices, he has never violated Federation law until now. Captain, Tabak asks to speak with you. Captain, I heard about what happened on Morassia. That creature you discovered, it sounds exactly like a Veranak, a Garidian creature. Except the Veranak was exterminated long ago. Maybe not exterminate enough. How could a Ferengi trader get hold of an extinct animal? I have a theory. The followers brought many animals with them when they fled Gerid. It may be 
that this creature came from the followers colony. Who would like to have a domestic creature that eats electricity? So if we learn where he got the animal, we may learn where the fifth scroll is. I think this is a promising lead to pursue. Captain, we've found Aramuf. A Ferengi trader should be at Jaward 3. Set a course for the Jaward system. Engage. Captain, we are approaching Aramut's ship. Shields up, Mr. Worf. Lock phases. Captain, they are activating their warp drive. They are attempting to flee. At maximum speed, they will be out of range in 12 seconds. We cannot allow that, Mr. Worf. Prepare to fire a warning shot. Lock phases, 5% power. Fire. Firing phasers. Direct hit. No damage. We are being hailed. What's the meaning of this? How dare you fire upon a helpless tradesman? I am Aramut, an honest Ferengi trader. I am not a criminal. Why does the Federation persecute me? You are wanted for smuggling. You will accompany us to the nearest starbase where you will be turned over to the proper authorities. Accusations require proof, Captain. I do not think Starfleet Command would enjoy hearing how you bullied a defenseless traitor based only upon your suspicions. Your last shipment to Marassia included several protected species banned from import under Federation law. Nonsense. All of my animals are perfectly legal. The animals listed in your records may have been legitimate, Adamant, but those weren't the ones you shipped. The restricted species were deliberately mistagged. This is a terrible shock to me, Captain. Mm. My suppliers must have substituted the illegal animals to fill their orders. Yep. Those it is a sad thing when a supplier cheats an honest businessman like myself. I'm glad we could clear up this misunderstanding so quickly. If that is all, I'll <laughs> be on my way. <laughs> uh. Perhaps the Romulans would be interested to learn that several of the species you transported came from their space. I think I'll send them a report. You do know what Romulans do to smugglers, don't you? What lies are you spreading, human? I didn't take any Romulan species. They were from Phrygis. Well, if we're mistaken, I'm sure you can explain everything to the Romulans when they find you. I am sure we can negotiate a deal, Captain Picard. Uh-huh. The only thing I'm willing to negotiate is your surrender, as well as Idia's. You can take it here, but I can tell you much in exchange for my freedom. Perhaps you'd be interested in some unusual movements of the Romulan fleet. Ah, uh, well, hmm. <laughs> Mr. Data, transmit the coordinates of the brig so that Adamat can beam Idia to his new quarters. All right, Adamat, you've got a deal. Okay, so we, keep, we didn't get a chance. Done then. It is a fair exchange. You may have Idia and my shipping records immediately. Now, for the information you have purchased. I hear reports from the other side of the neutral zone, not that I have ever been there, of course, about a massive refit of the Romulan fleet. What kind of refit? They've upgraded the warp coils and added secondary power cores to many warbirds. Okay. The weapon systems suffer, of course. It may even impair cloaking ability. But... but they could easily outlast any Federation vessel at maximum warp. It sounds as if the Romulans are in a race, one they want to win very badly. Who can say what the Empire does or does not want? But a merchant always watches the spending habits of potential customers. For example, there has been a sharp rise in the price of ancient Takan and Chodak relics in sectors near the neutral zone. Takan. Oh, we, we already faced, faced, faced with them, faced off with, with them uh, in a, in a pre previous Star Trek game. Interesting information, if it's true. Resurgence. I would never cheat you, Captain. Right. Now, 
This has been very entertaining, but I do have other customers. The Ferengi is moving away. Warp 5. Let him go. We have what we came for. Captain, the report on Aramut's shipment is in the computer. Apparently the animals which Dr. Hoon Forge thought were from Romulan space actually came from Shoniosho Epsilon 6, uncharted territory. Ha. Huh. I'll be sure to look at that report soon, number one. There's more, Captain. We can check on those animals in the Federation morphology database. These creatures are definitely related to species from Garrett. Shonoishu Epsilon 6, or Phrygis, as Aramut calls it, might just be our lost Garidian colony. Be sure to alert our guests. Lay in a course for Shonoishu Epsilon 6, Warp 5. Aye, sir. Engage.